Hello and welcome back to the Littlest Pet Cast. I am your host, James, and today we are going to be looking at the episode Commercial Success. So, we begin, and there's very little going on at the Littlest Pet Shop, and Blythe and Tomley are bored. And Blythe is making lanyards throughout all of this. So, then a chef comes in <laughs> and asks if this is the littlest pot shop. And Mrs. Trombley <laughs> directs him in the right direction. <laughs> he just, he comes in and he says, is this uh, the littlest pot shop? It's, it's very Italian. <laughs> the little, I am in need of a very little pot. <laughs> Oh god, I I completely forgot about this bit at the beginning. And it was it uh uh I love it. Mrs. Stromley gives him directions, which is like a block over and a few streets down. I guess I don't know, I don't remember. It's been a it's been a bit. I've been taking notes and stuff. Anyway. So then, a race car driver walks in, and she asks uh, if this is the littlest pit stop. And uh, they say no, and they, they go on their way. Oh, God. <laughs> this, is, this is the best and worst bit. Uh, and then the door opens, and then we are told to look down, and we see... I'm just going to say a leprechaun because I wouldn't be surprised if leprechauns exist in this universe anymore. And he says he's littlest Pat and wants a shop to cater to his <laughs> needs. I'm sorry. I had to cut there because I said a bad word. <laughs> and avoiding bad words is going to be a theme in this episode. But like, littlest Pat. It's just, <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. <laughs> it is, it is so, oh, uh, I can't even, <laughs> like, he is, okay. So, when, when Littlest Pat is told that the, the shop doesn't serve his needs, he, he angrily river dances out. Like, this is, this is, this is so, this is so wrong, but so funny. It's like, it's like a mini episode of Italia. Oh, God. Littlest Pat. Oh, I can't. I can't. Like, oh. I almost said that word again, but I didn't. Okay, so, so be because she's bored, Mrs. Trombley wants customers because she's bored and like doesn't want to deal with boredom anymore. And uh, they're trying to brainstorm ideas on uh, how to drum up customers, and Mrs. Trombley suggests that we would have more customers if we start catering to littlest path. <laughs> Cripes. I I I just I love I love littlest path. It's 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 the dumbest but greatest thing. But then Blythe thinks about it. And then comes up with the idea of making a commercial. But Mrs. Tromley says that there's no room in the budget for a commercial. But Blythe says that they can save money by doing it themselves. And that her friend Jasper is great at making videos on his computer. Mrs. Tromley starts liking the idea, but is still a little unsure. But then a golfer comes in and asks if this is the littlest putt shop. And he's turned down. And then Mrs. Twombly 
is all on board with this commercial idea. So, after whatever the heck that was, I have to ask, is this just like the littlest part of town? Is that why it's called the littlest pet shop? Because it's a pet shop in, like, the borough of Littlest. And Largest Ever is in the borough of Largest Ever. Man, how do, how do these boroughs even get drawn, anyway? It's, it's weird. I guess Littlest, because it's, like, compact... But it has, it's, it's little, but it has a lot of people in it, as you can tell by having uh, Blythe and all her friends and Mrs. Twombly, uh, an Italian chef, a race car driver, a golfer, and littlest Pat, let's not forget. <laughs> so it, it's very tiny, but very diverse. Burrow. And then I guess largest ever is like the rich burrow. Although they both go to the same school. I need a map. I desperately need a map. <laughs> but I love the idea of this just being the burrow of littlest. And everyone just conforming to that idea like maybe other <laughs> boroughs should do that like can I get to the queen's pet shop <laughs> oh god I I love this idea as much as I love littlest pat so We then go to Blythe meeting with Jasper, Youngmi, and Sue about helping out with the commercial. And they all like the idea. And then uh, Jasper says that he needs to get his director game face on. So he has to prepare. Anyway. Meanwhile, the pets were watching through the window the whole time and are kind of excited about the prospect of a commercial. And Minka wonders what those are. And Vinny explains that it's those things on TV that come between the things you want to watch. And then Pepper explains that it pays for what you want to watch. And the rest of the pets go, oh. And Sunil says, I've always wondered. So then a little later, Blythe is confirming the commercial stuff to the pets. And Penny Ling is excited, but then worries that she's too cute for TV. She then shows off her cuteness, and everyone agrees that she's rather cute. Now, Penny Ling knows how to work it. You know, she, she, she knows how to use her skills. Anyway, but Blythe says it'll be fine. She then leaves to go work on the script. Vinny says that uh, it doesn't get any more show busy than being on a commercial. But Blythe has been on national TV at least three times. And one of those times was because she was the center of a fashion trend. And also, Sunil and Zoe recently became memes. Although I guess this is more proper showbiz than reality TV, reality TV. No, I guess a Martha Stewart show is like national TV. Like it's not, it's not, I wouldn't put it in with reality TV is what I'm saying. Either way, um, so Neil then follows it up with, and yeah, this is not great. 
But if there were an animated television show about our antics at the Littlest Pet Shop, and Vinny says, that'll never happen, and, uh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of, like, breaking the fourth wall, or lightly dancing on it. Like, it it can work, but you need to have the right method. Because otherwise you just look foolish. And this looks very, very foolish. Like, like if you're going to be on a wall dancing about the wall... You gotta be David Hasselhoff at the Berlin Wall kind of thing where everyone is cheering for you because you support what they support and it's just all good, but it's not all good in this because it just looks silly. Also, no, well... I mean, I wrote it down. I might as well talk about it. So, I did note that, I mean, a show all about their antics might not happen. And I'm not including this show because it does diverge a bit I mean there are episodes that do focus on the pets for sure and B stories that focus on the pets but like there are some episodes where the pets are a very minor thing and uh you know that doesn't like it's both good and bad cause like Like, it does show Blythe is more than just the pets. But I still think the balance is a little... Well, no, I think the balance is fine, actually. You you get enough of each side eventually. But, like, if you want it to be all about the pets, then you might be missing the point so then Minka begins to wonder what a commercial would with them would be like and then Pepper says like this and then uses the remote to cause a static transition and then we see Minka and Pepper in an aisle and Minka is adoring the selection Russell then comes out talking like a cheesy announcer or that one guy from Boku no Hero Academia who I guess is also a cheesy announcer but that's his superpower kind of. Anyway. (laughs) And he and Pepper then uh, tag team on the large selection of pet toys at Littlest Pet Shop. And Pepper even says that they cater to pets from distant galaxies. So then we get another static transition. And we cut to Vinny in an early 90s hip-hop setting with a high-top fade. And he starts talking gangsta about how cool a place the Lilith's Pet Shop is to hang out at. And then Minka comes out and says that uh, when he says stuff like that, it sounds lame. And Minnie says, I know. So at least they're self-aware. I mean, I think that's the whole point of this joke. It's it's supposed to be like like white people pretending to to not 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 blackface but just like what cuz I have to make that disclaimer 
because I, I brought it up before, but but like like white boys pretending to be gangster and hood. And if you didn't know by now, my pronunciations of the words gangsta and hud should tip you off that I am very white. <laughs> and it's just, it's funny. Anyway, so then we get another static interlude and we cut to a space theme background with Sunil using magic to show off Littlest Pet Shop's vast food selection as well. And Penny's the assistant in all of this and claps when all of the magic goes well. But then when uh, Sunil's magic explodes, like seriously, Professor X, I, n I know you, you don't like this city because it broke off from NYC, but, but come on. Help this poor mongoose out. They, they go on trips so like you can just meet them there if you have that big a vendetta so when his magic explodes penny's less enthused about it this like, like some episodes this episode is really more front-loaded with uh you know tangents at least I think it is. I haven't gotten to the back half, but notes on the back half aren't as tangent-y. So we just gotta make it through. So then, uh, more static. And then we cut to just a song and dance number. And it's... It, it, it is okay for what it is, but, like, I just don't like the style, really. It's a very, like, 50s-ish song and dance style, like, commercial, 50s commercial kind of thing. And it takes place on, like, a Vegas show floor and everyone's wearing, like, a feathered hat. And it's just weird, but it's not weird, like some other songs probably because we're already immersed in a, a bit of the weirdness by like the whole remote thing and and Vinny pretending to be gangsta and all of that and it's just kind of eh at this point but there is some light relief in like the lyrics because uh there's a brief interruption during the song where they debate on whether or not they should sell fishing nets and they end up they should because fish are pets and then they also routinely ask to have you spend your money here but it's it's not as funny or as direct as uh, it was in the Spongebob episode where they made a commercial where they literally ended it with come and spend your money here <laughs> and yeah I yeah but I, saying the show isn't as good as a classic Spongebob episode isn't groundbreaking <laughs> but I guess on with the show so they then finish the song and then we pan out to see them watching the various commercials they just did on their TV. And then they turn to look at us and then Minka pops down and says, we'll be right back after these messages. And then uses the remote to static us to the actual commercial break of the show, which I think is clever but it smacks a bit of the reality bending they did in um Day at the Museum. I I don't think it's as bad as Day at the Museum cuz that made me question the reality of the show itself. Whereas here, I think they just spend some time breaking the fourth 
wall, kind of, but not really. It's this really weird breaking and not breaking that you really shouldn't do too much. I think this is like the only time they do it. But like it's it's very odd, I will say. But I mean I guess the point is that this is just a one time thing and that like it's used for comedic effect. But like due to Day at the Museum it becomes questionable. Like, on its own, it's fine, but, like, with Day at the Museum now in play, it's weird. Man, Day at the Museum is really, really weird. I know I've been over this a lot, but, like, it's just weird. I don't get it. Back to this episode, though. Uh, Blythe, Blythe is going over her script and wonders if she should put a musical number in it, but then writes off the idea as being silly, which is funny because, you know, they just did one. Ha ha ha. And then Mrs. Tomley comes in with some ideas and Blythe looks them over. The first one she sees is having an elephant there. And Twombly responds with, People are always talking about the elephant in the room. Why does she not know this phrase either? It's not a southern turn of phrase. Like, uh, June bug in July. But it's Russian, though. But it's pre-communist Russia like 17 and 1800s Russia and she knows stuff from a century ago and five centuries ago and six centuries ago even but like this just seems weird that she doesn't know this it's it's a very common phrase, more common than it's Jake and um the fading of the lights. I don't know. It's it's odd. But like I don't know. I guess it's just a gap in her knowledge of metaphors so um Blythe looks over another idea about having a very expensive yacht pulling skiers holding up a littlest pet shop banner which Blythe says is a bit too much and uh the end of the ideas list is and I quote the gorgeous shop owner dressed in a fabulous diamond studded ball gown descends a grand staircase surrounded by muscular male dancers as she sings the Little Special Shop theme song <laughs> which they they show this and it's as great as you can imagine and <laughs> uh, like like, Tw Twombly knows what she wants. I'm not knocking her for it. En enjoy your muscle, man. En enjoy your muscle, man, <laughs> Mrs. Twombly. Anyway, Blythe then asks about uh, the theme song, and then uh, Mrs. Twombly starts singing the, the show's actual theme song. But then Blythe looks at her weird and Trombley says to forget the song. Everything else can stay in though, right? And Blythe says that the commercial isn't going to be 
extravagant. And she hopes that's okay with Mrs. Trombley. And Mrs. Trombley says yes, as long as she's in it. Okay. Uh, before we get any further into what I think is the real meat and potatoes of the episode, uh, I want to explain some headcanon I thought of for this episode or this show in general based on this episode so because Mrs. Trombley starts singing the show's actual theme song I want to say that it's actually the reverse Mrs. Trombley came up with the theme song first and then this show is sort of a show within a ch kind hold on let me let me explain so at some point Blythe sells the idea of this show to um, a person in this universe. Um, and so the theme song that Mrs. Tronley came up with is the actual theme song of this ch It's very hard to explain. Let me, let me think of how to explain it a bit. Okay. So, remember in Summertime Blues when I said the song, uh, It Won't Be Long, sounded like it's performed by an actual contemporary artist instead of just a piece of music made for the show. So, I believe that in some universe, whether it be this show's actual universe or a universe in which this show is pitched and has a better budget or whatever, that that is the case and that they use the theme song that Mrs. Twombly came up with and expand upon that for the actual theme song. I hope you get this, because I'm not explaining it as well as I could be, but it's also very hard to explain. So, I hope you get it. So now, off to the aforementioned meat and potatoes. Um, Blythe says that Jasper is a laid-back type and says that this commercial process will be fun but then Jasper walks in and he looks like um well the first word I would go to isn't PG so to come up with something that describes this word uh, I've come up with pompous with a side of faux hipster jerk. Or, as it will be known through the rest of the episode, Pwazovich. So, uh, Jasper looks and is beginning to act like a Pwazovich. And then we cut to uh, Jasper, Sue, and Young Me outside setting up for the first shot. And Jasper is being very belligerent to them, saying they want to get this shot right and it's going to be hard with all these amateurs. Like stuff like that, you know, being a real. Pozofidge to everyone. 
and he readies everyone for an establishing shot of the shop. Young Me asks him to chill, and he says he'll chill when he's done with filming. And then Sue says the camera is ready, and Jasper says, finally, and begins filming. The first take is ruined by Mrs. Tombley coming out asking if they started filming. And Jasper becomes frustrated at this. So he asks young me to tell everyone to stay in during the shot. But she is using a walkie-talkie to tell Blythe this. And, uh... It doesn't work because it comes in all staticky and they don't understand what they're saying. But it's it's 2014 when this episode aired. Just just shoot a text, young me. It's just easier. But since they can't understand everything, Blythe walks out and ruins the second shot. Jasper gets more Pozovage like and says, don't come out very angrily. So he is determined to get this right, and on the third try they do, but the camera ran out of batteries, and he gets very angry and throws a tantrum. So then we cut to later, where Mrs. Tombley is nervous and talking to Blythe about how nervous she is, but Blythe says she'll be fine. Jasper approaches and says that all Mrs. Tombley has to do is look into the camera and say her line. Mrs. Twombly says, you bet, Brett, which leads into a mini conversation about how Jasper's name isn't Brett. So after that, I guess, uh, Jasper begins the shot and Mrs. Twombly is nervous and isn't saying anything. Jasper reminds her that she needs to say her line. And Twombly forgets her line, and Blythe gives it to her, but she's still a bit confused and thinks she said it already, but she didn't. Jasper says that uh, she needs to say the line, and uh, Twombly begins to say it, but forgets the last part of it. Blythe for it. Blythe gives it to her, and Twombly again thinks they're done. Jasper angrily says yes and moves on. Tomley says that this is so much fun, but Blythe is unsure because her friend is turning into a real Pwasovich. So then we cut to the play area and Jasper asks Blythe to tell the animals to stay still because as far as he knows, they just listen to her because they, they're on a wavelength with each other. So Blythe asks why, and Jasper explains in a Pwasovich way that uh, a pet shop commercial would be better with pets in it. (laughs) And Blythe gets that, but asks why they have to stay still. And Jasper explains it's his artistic direction. And Blythe says that he's the boss, nervously. And Jasper says that's something we can both agree on. And he is very Pwasovich-y. pwasovich So Blythe explains sarcastically that the pets need to stay still because their great director said so. And they ask why, and Blythe says that it's his direction. But then Zoe comments on how any director who doesn't use me to my fullest doesn't have much of an artistic direction. So we then cut to a montage of failed individual shots of each of the pets. Uh, Russell uh, curls up into a ball. Vinny dances and falls. Penny poses... But Vinny comes back and bumps into her and she starts crying. Sunil gets scared. Mink is too energetic and messes with the camera. Zoe's goes well until the boom mic drops. And Pepper tries some prop comedy, but Jasper isn't happy about it. 
Pepper then completes her gag, which ends with her punching herself with a punching glove and a jack-in-the-box. But uh, her smell releases, and it stinks up the room. So then we cut to uh, after all of the filming is done. And Jasper thanks everyone, but in a condescending Pwazovich way. He then promises to make the best possible commercial with what little he's got and bids everyone an adieu. And everyone comments on how full of himself he is, especially for using the word adieu. Yeah, I didn't make that one up. He says adieu. That is a very Pwazovich word, at least in the English language. In the French language, it's probably fine. I don't know. French is a little weird because, like, in English, it carries the notion of high society. But in French, it's just the common language. (laughs) So, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. Anyway, uh, at home, in her room, Blythe is working on her computer when Jasper video calls her and says he has a way to salvage the commercial. Blythe greets him sarcastically, and he goes on about how he can fix the crummy footage. Uh, He says that he has a program that makes it look like the animals are talking, So he'll make them the stars. Blythe likes this idea and covers her own tracks by saying she doesn't know what's up with that. But then when she asks about Mrs. Twombly, Jasper says she's out, which upsets Blythe. Jasper says that's showbiz and it's his artistic direction, like a total Pwazovich. And Blythe is really worried about Mrs. Twombly. So the pets, Blythe, Young Me, Sue, Twombly, and Jasper have a viewing party for the commercial. And Blythe is worried about how it will turn out. She goes over to Jasper and asks about the voice suggestions she made. And Jasper says he looked at him, but that she's way off and used his own instead. And tells Blythe, Not to worry her pretty, oversized head. Blythe snidely remarks that I'm not the only one with a big head. And I... (laughs) Yeah, I don't... I I just find that kind of funny. So, everyone's sitting, and Jasper explains how the commercial is his masterpiece. Like a total Pwazovich. Pwazovich. That word is really weird to say, but at least it's PG. And he shows it. So, in this version of the commercial, all of them had some weird voices. And they are all upset about them except Sunil. Because Penny and Sunil sound gruff, and Penny doesn't like it, but Sunil says, that sounds like me, yeah. Meanwhile, Russell and Minka sound like squeaky versions of Patty and Selma. And uh, Pepper sounds like an old man. Vinny sounds like a girl. And Zoe sounds like a Russian man. And everyone's not good with it except for Sunil and Blythe tries to curb everyone's horror by saying everyone thinks their voice sounds weird when they hear it and then Jasper delivers the last line as the logo pops up in the commercial and then asks what everyone thinks Mrs. Trombley is holding it together at first but then she breaks down in tears and runs off Jasper, like the Pwazovich he is, thinks that that was a positive reaction. And then Jasper says he has good news. 
Blythe sarcastically asks if the good news is that this is the fake version and we're all being punked. Jasper says no and says that this commercial will air on local stations starting tomorrow because his dad is friends with someone at the local television stations. And uh, Jasper walks off or does something. So Blythe tells the pets to stay there while she checks on Mrs. Trombley. She finds her in the play area in the fire hydrant and Trombley says that uh, everyone seems to come here to cry so I figured I should do it as well. And Blythe asks if she's going to be okay and Trombley says that she's gotten by without being in a commercial for this long so she'll be fine a bit longer. And then Twombly asks about Jasper and his personality switch. And uh, Blythe is like, he's not usually like this. And then Mrs. Twombly tells her to talk to Jasper about his Poissavage attitude. Blythe says that she will and tells Mrs. Twombly that she can stay in there as long as she likes. And honestly, this is just a really nice scene. So, uh, Blythe goes back and confronts Jasper about how much of a jerk he's being. I guess I could have used jerk, but, like, jerk only conveys part of it. Like, he looks really, really like the adjective I would use if this weren't PG. And the ad adjective I would use in this PG setting is Pwazovich. But just the way he looks and the way he acts, it's, it's Pwazovich, okay? I, I can't, I can't say it. I can't say the actual word. Although, uh... <laughs> When, when I'm probably explaining this to everyone in the uncensored parental advisory name game episode for this season, you can hear it then. But, but, ah, not, not this, not now. I'm sorry that Pwazovich is the best you have to go on. Again, that is pompous with a side of faux hipster jerk. So, uh, Blythe says that Jasper's being a jerk, or Pwazovich, to be more accurate, to everyone, to Mrs. Trombley, to the pets, and to his friends. And then Blythe goes on a metaphor about how Jasper's the captain, and that this is his creative ship. But then it kind of falls apart because Blythe continues. But you don't care about the people who hoist the sails and push them bales and make the boat go. <laughs> Which <laughs> I love. I, I think it's funny. It's I, I kind of like tortured metaphor. And this one's very much torture. <laughs> and basically the sentiment is that while he's the captain, he forgot about his crew. And even with the tortured metaphorness, Jasper admits that he was wrong instantly. Which I guess is sort of good and bad at the same time. Because, um... I don't know. It's... Well, okay, he explains that he was so panicked about messing up that uh, he forgot what was important and, like, what to do. And I guess he's just putting on a Pwazovich mask to hide his fears in all of this, which I guess is different than what happened with Blythe on Terriers and Tiaras where it just 
instantly turn back from being actually evil. And, like, like as much as Pozovich is very not good, I wouldn't say it's evil, just unpleasant. Like, like the smell of a landfill. A landfill isn't evil, it's just unpleasant. So, I guess like when he's confronted about it with, I guess, Blythe's righteous anger that I explained that she got, maybe, maybe it was evil. But it's not that evil. Like, because, like, Blythe was able to convince him right away. I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm hoping that, like, whatever redemption happens, happens a little more gradually. It's a little more arm's length. Anyway, but it's, it's fine because, like, it is just, like, a persona he whipped up himself and not, like, not, like, being truly evil and getting immersed in, like, an evil culture like Blythe did in uh, Terriers and Tiaras. I don't know. It's weird. So, um, he apologizes to everyone. And everyone forgives him because, uh, they see that he was just scared of messing up and, like, that he's truly sorry. And they all forgive him. And after he's forgiven, he says there's still time. And he rushes out to make a new commercial. So... At a second airing party, at the actual airing of it, uh, everyone except Jasper is there, and they're all anticipating the commercial. So the commercial begins, and Twombly is there at the start and in the center of everything, using one of the failed takes to begin humorously. So... The funny thing about this commercial now is that the pet voices are how they should be, but they're just applied to different pets. (laughs) Like, uh, Pepper and Penny's voices switch. Vinny gets Sunil's voice. Minka gets, uh, Vinny's voice. And Sunil gets Minka's voice. And Russell and Zoe switch voices. And while most of the pets think it's funny, Zoe is a bit miffed about this. But it's better than being a Russian dude. So take that as you will. And Blake even comments on how Jasper can pull off all of these voices well but just applied them to <laughs> wrong pets. But they still think it's hilarious, and I do too. It is hilarious. So, uh, Twombly ends the commercial, and Blythe also helps end it, but Blythe is voiced by <laughs> Jasper this time. And <laughs> it's just it's just fun. So, after the commercial airs, Tombly says she loves it. And then we cut to a different day and business is booming at the littlest pet shop. Jasper walks in and Mrs. Tombly compliments him for his work. Jasper says, thanks. It was nice working with you. And, you know, I kind of like this scene. It's, it's, it's subdued where it's like he knows he hasn't been totally forgiven or he doesn't feel like he should be totally forgiven. But 
people start treating him like how he was before he became a Pozovich. And he's starting to accept it a little more. I like I like these subdued scenes as much as I complain about them. And really, I don't complain about them. I just think it's jarring when you compare it to weird and wacky scenes like Littlest Pat, which I also like. But again, in comparison with these subdued scenes... It's it's just a hard line to walk. So, Twombly then suggests a new project, a script she's been working on for a film called Twombly, Portrait of a Pet Care Bombshell. And Jasper, not wanting to take this, says, I'll have my people call your people. Blythe responds with, you have people? And Jasper says, you know, and they both giggle. <laughs> and that's uh, that's the end of this episode. <laughs> so th- this episode, I don't know. Like, going into it, I didn't know what to expect. And usually that is a recipe for a grade A episode of the podcast because like I I'm more or less new ish to all of it and it just becomes like more off the cuff and funnier in my opinion. I don't know. Maybe you like the episodes where like I really know what I'm going to be talking about right away. But I don't know. I think it's I think this episode of the show is it's quintessential Littlest Pet Shop. It has weird stuff but it also has like serious subdued stuff and it's just a really fun ride throughout and, like, it's very interesting seeing all of it come together in a way that you wouldn't see other shows do. Like, it's not too crazy and out there. I think this really marries the two concepts as well as you can. It might not be the best at it, but honestly, this is a pretty good episode, all things considered. So with that being said, that will end this episode of The Littlest Pet Cast. Be sure to leave your comments and reviews on Shout Engine, on Apple Podcast, on the Google Play Store and wherever else RSS feeds go when they are looking for a shop that caters to littlest pets. And be sure to tune in next time for the episode So Interesting. And I will see you then. Okay, so the word I wanted to say instead of Pozovich is You happy now?